Hey everyone, Dozer here bringing you a new video to compare and contrast the two chess piece equipments that Prisms have been discussing since the hero first lit up the competitive scene in 2021. First, let's look at our two options. We have Fyandal's Spring Tunic, a generic piece of equipment which was introduced in the original set of Flesh and Blood. Welcome to Wraith. Every turn at the start of your turn, you can put a counter on this card, and you can, as an instant, trade in three of those counters for a single resource to help pay for your cards and effects. It also can block for one in a pinch, but will be destroyed due to it having Blade Break. When Prism was released, the Vestige of Soul was released as well. Vestige is a light talent equipment, so only light heroes can use it. If a card goes to your hero's soul on a turn, light cards that you pitch grant one extra resource. It also has Blade Break and one defense. The main argument that has sprung up around these two equipment options is the predictability of the tunic, and the explosive power and ceiling of the vestige. If you choose to run the tunic, you are giving up a very powerful interaction, with cards entering your soul, but you free yourself up to using fewer light cards. On the other side, if you run vestige, you gain access to powerful plays, such as playing Tome of Divinity, or by playing your instant yellow auras with a single blue pitch card of the light talent. However, in order to capitalize on the value of the Vestige, you have to run these expensive cards. Expensive meaning these four cost and higher cards. And enough light cards to afford them. Due to the design of the Illusionist class, of which Prism is the sole member at the moment, Prism's matchups can vary wildly based on whether or not she is on a heavy aura plan or a heavy phantasm plan. Because Prism can swap cards out before a match starts when playing in the classic constructed format, or put simply, sideboarding, Prism can pivot between two styles to try and get the best matchup possible into different opponents. Because Prism leans heavily on this strategy, it is often impossible to fit every card that Prism wants to use in the same deck. She simply has too many compelling options that are good for very different situations. Oftentimes, this means that the Prism player has to have most of their cards do double duty while sacrificing the dream scenarios that some combinations of cards can produce. Because of this, choosing between Tunic and Vestige is a crucial point of consideration, because whichever one you choose will inform the way the rest of your deck is built. Prism has to balance yellow pitch cards in her deck for Luminaris, having enough pitch to play her instant auras, having enough cards that block in her deck, and having enough defense reactions for various matchups and generic cards to break phantasms in the mirror not to mention having access to different equipments to handle arcane barrier needs against runeblade wizard and the like because of all these deck building factors prism has to make hard choices when designing her game plan so what are the benefits of tunic tunic allows the prism player to generate one resource every three turns with the caveat that if the prism does not spend the resource immediately they delay future resource generation this is because you can only have three counters on Tunic at any one time. Prism players often cite the following benefits of this resource, such as using it to pay for Phantasmal Footsteps to either gain an action point back if their attack was destroyed by a Phantasm, or to use it to give it plus one defense for the turn. They could use it to block arcane damage in a pinch, or they could use it to help break over a breakpoint of a cost of a card, such as paying for a four cost card with a blue plus the Tunic counter, or you could use it with a yellow card and a tunic resource to pay for a three cost card such as phantasmclasm or prismatic shield. You can even use that one resource to play a one cost attack such as Wartoon Herald or Mirage Metamorph from your arsenal or hand in case you had to block a lot but still want to pressure your opponent's HP. You can even use it to pay for things like Pummel off of a blue card and a two cost Herald being your only play for the turn. Beyond these uses for the resource though, by not having a high density of light cards, the Tunic user can fill their deck with far more generic and non-light illusionist cards without losing out on pitch efficiency. But then what are the benefits of Vestige? Vestige only requires that a card goes to your soul in order to make every light card that you pitch afterwards give you an extra resource. But what does this enable? The biggest things are that it enables Tome of Divinity to be played off of a single light blue card. Genesis, Merciful Retribution, Ode to Wrath, and Parable of Humility off a single light blue as well. Or an Arclight Sentinel off of two yellows, in addition to having extra floating resources for various heralds throughout your turns. 
Well, that might seem like a shorter list, there's no way to quantify how many times in a game your extra resources from Vestige will unlock plays for you. It is not rare for you to get two to three extra resources on a single turn from Vestige when used in tandem with Erudition, Tome of Divinity, Genesis, or Merciful Retribution. This can help you play more attack cards like Wartoon Herald, or other two-cost heralds, or even to make a Spectral Shield to help get a bit more life gain and damage done to your opponent. So the question becomes, if Vestige can easily produce resources throughout the game, is the one resource per three turns, as a best case scenario, worth giving up the explosive power of the Vestige? Well, let's take a look at the deck building cost to see. And by deck building cost, I refer to the number of slots in the deck that differ based on having to use different cards. For instance, in a Vestige list, it is typical to need to run the following suite of cards to reliably get value off of your Vestige and to have a payoff for those resources. Those cards being 3 Tome of Divinity, Genesis, Merciful Retribution, Soul Shield, Arclight Sentinel, and Herald of Ravages, Protection, Triumph, Rebirth, and Wartoon Herald Blue. Or, put another way, 30 cards in your deck have to be dedicated and put in there in service to making Vestige of Soul worth it. However, seasoned Prism players will recognize that these are some of Prism's best cards, and that running these cards is often the default choice no matter what equipment you run. The only card that truly needs to be in the list for Vestige to make sense is Tome of Divinity itself, as it's the only card that aims to consume extra resources to give you more cards to spend your other extra resources on that same turn on. For instance, if I pay for Tome of Divinity with a single light blue card, I draw three cards, that's my first extra resource off the Vestige, then whatever I play for the rest of that turn could give me an extra resource here or there, easily netting you three extra resources on a turn. The only card that truly needs to be in the list for Vestige to make sense is Tome of Divinity. And if we compare that and look at Spring Tunic, there are certainly a lot of lines of play that open up and prevent the need to waste resources and cards to overpay for effects like Footsteps or a single War Tomb. But in almost every case, the Tunic resource does not cause Prism to run different cards from a Vestige build, except for Tome of Divinity. It simply can open up new lines of play with the cards she already uses. If that truly is the case though, then the real question becomes if my deck only needs a few different cards to be working with Vestige, and Vestige can produce a lot of resources, does the Vestige produce enough value on average or is it better to run Tunic for the guaranteed value? Put another way, are the play lines that Tunic enables stronger when compared in tandem with its reliability and predictability compared to the power of the Vestige play lines with its less predictability? Well, if we look at the math behind the cards, it's pretty easy to figure this out. Tunic gives, at best, one resource every three turns. If Vestige can match that, it's normally going to be about the same power level, especially because of the first two of those turns, you can be using that time to get ahead and control of the game. However, if Vestige generates more than one resource per three turns, then you can easily say it produced more value than Tunic. There are certainly games where getting the soul can be a challenge, namely when Prism tries to use a fatigue strategy, where she aims to block as much as possible. The slow generation of a resource over time can end up producing more value than Vestige, since you aren't playing any of your cards. But the biggest problem with this strategy is that you can't win a game through fatigue against most heroes. Blocking doesn't deal damage, and most opponents will be pitching their cards, and will eventually run you out of options as the Prism player. So while Tunic can help versus a hero like Chain, who banishes most of his deck over the course of a game, fatiguing himself, most heroes have an easy way of pressuring Prism all game. Since Prism has access to Soul Shield, Merciful Retribution, Genesis, Heralds, and Halo of Illumination, Prism can guarantee to work with at least 7 Soul in a match, and generally, 7 turns of having Vestige active in a game. If these turns generate even only one resource each, the Tunic would need 21 turns to be able to match the value. If Prism gets any more Soul than the guaranteed, of 3 Mercifuls, 3 Soul Shield, and the Halo, the Vestige can easily eclipse the power of the Tunic in no time flat. So now we can see that the Vestige has a high ceiling, unreachable by Tunic in many ways, and the floor of Vestige is not too far off from the floor of Tunic itself. So if Vestige has a higher ceiling and a comparable floor, with a very similar deck list overall, is Vestige the best choice? 
before I state my verdict, I want you to consider the following. If I attack my opponent with a Wartoon Blue, with Go Again off of Luminaris and one resource floating with two cards in hand, a standard four card hand. If I have Tunic, what am I really threatening? Most of the time, it's just five damage. My opponent can rest assured that letting the Wartoon hit will not be any more threatening than a red Rising Solar Tide. It's just damage and one soul. However, with the only thing changed being a Vestige for the Tunic, all of a sudden, that blue Wartoon could be threatening to turn on Vestige, make Tome Divinity live, and send Prism off to the races. Likewise, if a Prism has Merciful Retribution or Genesis on the board and has Tunic, what downside is there to leaving the Genesis up? Or what downside is there to killing the Merciful? Without Vestige, Genesis just gives you one Spectral a turn and maybe a draw if you run enough light cards. Merciful is just one Arcane if you attack it. However, if Prism has Vestige, the Genesis represents far more threat for sticking around by giving you the extra resources on demand as well as the tokens with you having more light cards to guarantee the cantrip by drawing back the card that you put into your soul. And the Merciful represents a landmine that will give the Prism the ability to easily replace it with another aura if our opponent destroys it, sending it to our soul. It can even let us sneak in Tome of Divinity to gain card advantage if our opponent took a turn off to attack the Merciful. With Vestige, every Herald, every Aura, and every turn with Halo, Active represents a threat of incredible tempo, damage, and setup power, unlocking a ceiling that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with even Sonata Arcanics. Meanwhile, Tunic is a predictable, non-threatening, though reliable equipment that helps the non-Prism plan their turns around the extra resource. They can see it coming a mile away, and that gives them free reign to ignore soul triggers, to pressure the Prism's face, and to neglect blocking knowing that the Heralds attacking them are too weak and toothless to come back into a match where the Prism was already behind. It is this logic that has led me to stick with the Vestige lists, even to this day and am convinced that the Vestige builds are the way to go, based on the current card pool during Everfest. Not to take away from the success that people had with Tunic, but Tunic is definitely a viable option. It is valid. Tunic is not a bad equipment, and honestly, Prism could probably be as strong in the meta right now if she didn't run a chess piece at all. Tunic has its benefits, Vestige has its benefits, but I do think that the power of the Vestige giving you the high ceiling to win games while also helping you to turn games around and be on the front foot, which is where Prism needs to be in order to win reliably, especially into Rune Blades or the like, I can't help but recommend Vestige as the go-to best option. The only caveat I will say to that is that Vestige is far more difficult to play than Tunic. Tunic is reliable, predictable, and every game will play out effectively the same way. As a new Prism player, it's probably best to start with the Tunic lists to get a feel for how Prism plays, and then as you develop more experience with Prism and get more practice, you can transition to using the Vestige builds in order to maximize the ceiling of Prism by seeing the lines that you need to take in order to win the game through mounting incredible amounts of tempo. But that'll do it for today's video. Thank you so much for listening and watching, and it's always a pleasure to bring you guys fresh content and fresh discussion. I would love to hear from each and every one of you in the comments to hear whether you think that Vestige or Tunic is better. Has the video swayed you? Or did I miss a detail that you think is very important for why Tunic is better than Vestige? I'd love to talk with you about it in the comments below, or you can join me on my Discord, which will be linked in the description of the video if you want to participate in theory crafting and deck building discussions. Otherwise, please, consider liking and subscribing. It means the world to the channel and helps me bring this content to the community. Thank you again so much for your support, and I will see you in the next video. Take care and stay cool. Peace. Thank you so much for watching. This video and videos like it are made possible thanks to viewers like you. If you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like, comment, or consider subscribing for more flesh and blood content. Additionally, I'd like to give a special shout out to all of the patrons who help make this video content possible, starting with the Dreamweaver tier patron, Tara Blitz. Thank you so much for your continued support and helping make this channel thrive. Moving on, we've got the Sentinel tier patrons, which is the current tier which allows coaching sessions to be scheduled with me to talk about your flesh and blood needs. We have Bond, David Romish, Exploding Potatoes, Frederick Lundovic, 
Jacob, Joe Ginoli, Michael Lynch, P13, TR2U, Ronnie Martin, Tim J, and Todd Stewart. Thank you all so much for your support. It means the world, and I could not do this without you guys. Moving on, we have the Herald tier patrons. Thank you to everyone who helped support the channel on the Herald tier, and hope you enjoy your access to deck techs, strategy, the patron community, and all the other stuff that comes along with that. Starting with Alex Enslow, Andy Lee, Callum Bousfield, Carlos Carrero, Christopher D. Bates, Douglas DeJong, Ike Vic Hagen, Eric Borg, Francesco Lorenzi, Henrik, Jake Hitzos, Jake Arms, Jake Bennett Dwyer, Joel Wilhelm, John N. Downey Jr., Michael Stowell, Moonshaker, Muskrat Tuck, Nicholas Astner, Oxalotti, Raymond Scott, Starman Jones, Ty Craig, Valentin N., Will Fry, and Zombie Z. Finally, for the Spectral Shield tier patrons, we've got Andrew Good, Bryce Morgan, Drew Wagners, Rachel, and Sarazar. Thank you all so much for all of your support, and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Peace.